After White Ladder, you were on tour for a long time, and then I think was, you, yeah. you became a father, is this right? Yeah. And I, I think your father died at yeah. the same time. Did this, how did all these things impact into the, the next song, batch of songs you wrote? So I just think I was a bit sort of overwhelmed, and uh, everyone just deals with all this stuff in their own way, and for me, I kind of got a bit sort of introspective about it. But, you know, we're talking about self-consciousness, when you're writing, and, and it was a very self-conscious period. Uh, uh, you know, the success had happened on such an unbelievable scale. Um, it was more than I would ever have bargained for. I was never aiming there. Uh, it just happened, and it was a wonderful thing. But it, it suddenly... I, I was fighting in my work... Well, I was overwhelmed with strong feelings about a sense of loss, really. So everything I started to write was very downbeat. And I was, in a, I was absolutely desperate to reconnect with what I did. Uh, make music, songwriting, I was, to reconnect with the music. I was desperate to sort of really get back into it and get lost in the process. Because um, it was a long time on tour, then we quickly made A New Day at Midnight, well, reasonably quickly. And then we were on tour again for another year or so. Um, and so, it, when we came back off that, I wasn't going to rush into anything. Um, and Life in Slow Motion was made here, and it was a really long and involved process, but it was great, actually. When did you write The One I Love? Originally, the song came from playing the baritone guitar, which this is a version of. It wasn't this one. It was a, you know, I had an electric baritone, which I just bought, and I put it through an amp and with a trem on it, and it just sounded great. And, and Clune had his drums set up and started to play this really simple sort of beat. <laughs> with a tambourine on the snare or something, with like a beater, a soft beater. And just the sound of that was what led to the song. It was like, it seemed really lonesome and kind of like the chords had been there forever, because with this... That's how it started, on one of these things. Um, and it was a very straightforward song to write. I, I messed about with the lyrics a bit, um, a bit later on. Uh, but I got the lyric, so often the, the opening line is like a sort of trap door, and if that comes good, my imagination just sparks, and then you fall through the door, and then you, the song, the image begins to tumble on top of you. And I got senses of the whole thing. And then I'm going to close my eyes and watch you go uh, running through this life like a, f a field of snow. And I thought, oh, yeah, yeah. And I guess with my dad still sort of that whole thing of watching him say goodbye to us and die, and literally watching him die, it was like that sort of made a deep impression on me, unsurprisingly. And these moments are still resonant in life in slow motion. I think that's the undertone of lots of the songs. I think um, I've opened a completely new chapter now. I've, that's all just become a part of my makeup, and I've, I've I've headed out into the sunshine again. Well, relatively speaking. But anyway, this is the one I love. Yeah. Gonna close my eyes. Girl, watch you go Running through this life, darling Like a field of snow As the trees glide And it's graceful out Send a little prayer out to you Across the falling dark Tell the repo man and the stars above that you're the one I love. Whoa, yeah. Perfect summer's night. No, the wind that breathes. Just the bullets whispering gentle. Amongst the new green leaves There's things I might have said Only wish I could Now I'm leaking life, darling Like I'm leaking blood So tell the repo man And the stars above That you're the one 
don't see Elysium Don't see no fairy hill Just the lights up bright and burning In the Bay Hotel Next wave coming in Take my hand, darling I'm an old dance flower We could twist and shout 